welcome. Thank you for joining us. I'm Laura Torres with Blue Star Careers, and I am delighted to bring you this special edition of an employer spotlight to our community and the webinar to our all of our members at Facebook, uh, New York, Chicago, LinkedIn, and YouTube, and all of our spouse force community members as well, our military spouses. So we, I have the great pleasure of uh, meeting, virtually meeting Richard Moore, who is the Military Outreach Program Manager for General Dynamics. He's also a U.S. veteran and an amazing veteran mentor who is always looking for transition service members, military spouses, caregivers, and veterans to give them the next opportunity with this uh, incredible employer partner, as well as you know finding your right uh, opportunity right after service or even when you are calling during service, trying to find your next mission. So without further ado, I'm gonna bring in Richard. But first, I would like to ask that you please tell us where you're watching, post your questions, let me know where you're watching, where you are uh, currently um, supporting, post them under the comments, tell us, we would like to send you a shout out, highlight your questions towards the end. Uh, this is Spouse Force Live and we come here every other month. Uh, if you're watching us in our Facebook page for our Booster family members, we come here every other Wednesday, we bring you a webinar, a research, a career theme focus discussion so that you can get right into the action. But we also do uh, lots of these employer spotlights and research spotlights and all kinds of other little segments at our Spouse Force virtual community. So if you're not part of it, please, there's the link, go join in and get active with the action. So, but without further ado, let's bring Richard Moore and find out a little bit more about him and all the great opportunities that he has to share with us with General Dynamics. Richard, welcome. How are you doing today? Thank you. I'm doing well. I'm doing well. First and foremost, Laura, I, I greatly appreciate uh, appreciate you having me on today. Uh, again, it is greatly appreciated. Absolutely. Thank you. And thank you for adjusting your schedule because we had originally said uh, employer spotlight on a typical Tuesday, but I thought, you know, I was like, no, Richard, you are, you are an incredible uh, resource and an incredible partner that thank we ought to highlight you at a bigger, bigger audience, because not only do we want to make sure that our military spouses get access to, uh, to the employment opportunities that perhaps your team, you know, tracks and follows and shares throughout the community, but also our mm -hmm. veteran dependents, our, our, you know, a young adults, veterans, transitioning service members, all the members at large that are part of our military uh, community of Blue Star families, and so that everyone can take advantage of your great wisdom. So, but tell us a little bit mm -hmm. about you. Who, who is Richard Moore and what is your, uh, your role over at General Dynamics? Who is Richard Moore? I, I would have to say uh, that Richard Moore is um, a two-time transitioning service member. I've served uh, both in, in the Navy, go Navy, and and um, also uh, served in the Army. Uh, one of the things that, that I like about having served in uh, two branches, specifically those two, is whenever the game comes on, I, I never lose a bet. I, I have a tendency to break even. So for me, it, 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 it's a, a running joke that I keep to myself and my colleagues to pretty much keep that camaraderie going. They're, they're looking at me and, and saying, hey, you can't root for both. Yes, I can. I served in both. So um, that, that's a little bit about my, uh, my military career. Um, currently, I manage the military outreach program uh, here for General Dynamics Mission Systems. So um, a, a large part of my role is conducting outreach to uh, military-based organizations, as well as to the military community. As you stated, um, I, I provide service to uh, the transitioning service members, military spouses, caregivers, and, and veterans alike. So um, for me, uh, Richard is one who doesn't want to see anyone go through what he's going through in reference to transition. When I first transitioned out of the Navy, I went through eight jobs in one year. That actually prompted me to um, join the, the Army because at that point in time, once I left my eighth position, I said, this isn't working for me. So I, I need some guidance. I need some things that, that I can do uh, for myself and my family because if, if not, uh, there are going to be some other things that, that come up that um, I wanted to make sure that I was able to control. So that, that's just a, a, a little bit about Richard. 
Wow, what an incredible journey you have had, uh, absolutely. And wow, eight jobs in one year. Uh, yeah. I think I think you, uh, well, you, you sort of fit with that model through that transition of what normally they, you know, they tell us about our husbands, you know, my husband retired and also went through a couple of job explorations, but I don't think he made it through the eighth uh, portion of, of the job, uh, sort of a transition part of it. Uh, he did explore and he could not find his uh, his good match. Uh, and still exploring, but it, it was a it was a hard a hard uh, transition trying to figure out your next mission at least for him. So you know I'm, mm-hmm. I'm glad that we have um, incredible knowledge and incredible support from you for our community. We're so blessed because you know you've done the you know the do's and don'ts. Uh, you explored multiple avenues of what works and what doesn't work, and I think your wisdom will be so greatly appreciated by our community. So, but tell us now about General Dynamics. What what is who is General Dynamics? For some of the military spouse community, perhaps they might not know um, what what is General Dynamics and what kind of uh, employment opportunities do you have available? Well, uh, uh, General Dynamics uh, pretty much is a, a, a federal contractor. When you think of General Dynamics, because we are such a large organization, uh, the easiest way for, for me to explain the structure would be to think of an organization with a structure similar to DOD. DOD has roughly five branches of the military that help make up the structure for DOD, whereas General Dynamics has four sectors of business, which include aerospace, marine systems, combat systems, and technologies. Under each, you may find two to three, what I like to uh, call our commands, or for those of you like myself who served in the Navy, I look at those as ships. So I represent the USS Mission Systems. We're paired alongside the USS GDIT. Now, when it comes down to applying to different positions within our multiple business units, that, that uh, that's what we actually call those, um, we can't see applications within other business units. So we're not all tied into the same applicant tracking system. So definitely once you start going out and searching opportunities, uh, currently, General Dynamics overall has over 3,600 career opportunities today that are available. Um, when you're looking at General Dynamics, I always let uh, the military community know we have a home for you here at GD. It's just a matter of where you're going to start that home. And you, you're not bound to staying with that one business unit. So when it's time for you to move up, our corporate ladder, then at that point, if you've maxed yourself out within one business unit, you can take a look at other business units. If that unit has a position that you qualify for and you want to pursue, by all means, pursue it and you don't leave general dynamics. You're just simply leaving a business unit, kind of like on active duty. You're not leaving the military. You're just leaving a a unit or a specific duty station going to another. So all I'm going to say is, wow, <laughs> wow, wow. I mean, seriously, think about the possible, the incredible career growth that you just presented to our community. I don't think we have ever explored, like, at least I, I, I see you, but I see you as kind of like my big intimidating friend out there. You know, you're the shining star and you're like, oh my God, a federal right. contractor. I don't think I can do well through the whole application process and everything else, because you, I mean, you, you just presented so, so, such a wealth of different career growth for our community. And not only that, but trajectories. I mean, like you said, you don't have to leave one unit. You just, you just simply relocate to something else once you reach your cap. I really love that. So I want to know more about it. So do you have something to, to walk us with? Uh, you want to go ahead and get started with that? Um, well, share with sure. you. Sure, I'll be more than glad to uh, to share my screens and, and I'm prepared to do that today. So what I'll do is walk you through the General Dynamics homepage, um, as well as um, provide some information on how you can explore um, all of our business units, um, how to explore the career opportunities, and then I'll uh, provide a demonstration on uh, the General Dynamics Mission Systems page. So I will go ahead and begin my share. Oh, 
there we go it i think it disappeared let's share again okay it bounce out there it is okay, okay perfect it. perfect thank you so this is live by the way audience so this is live Make sure that you post your questions, your comments. Uh, Richard will address those towards the end. Please continue to tell us where you're watching. And don't keep this to yourself. Pay it forward. Tag someone right now who's looking for federal employment uh, to break it into a federal contractor because Richard is here, accessible to answer your questions and to make sure that you get the help, support and the help, or at least the direction to the where to. And that's exactly what we're going to do right now. He's going to walk us through the process of how to navigate their site because that can be right there, um, uh, just an intimidating task on its own. Perfect. Thanks again, Laura. Um, to begin, what we all, all are looking at now is the uh, General Dynamics homepage or GD.com. This is where um, most job seekers that are seeking opportunities with General Dynamics begin their search. Uh, where I'm going to take you to first is the Our Businesses section. So here what we have is access to all of our different business units. Um, again, um, we're broken into four business sectors, which include aerospace, marine systems, combat systems, and technologies. Here are all of the business units. As you begin to click on them, you, you gain a little bit of knowledge on the specific niche of each. Some of you, when you begin your job search, you'll find that there are specific niches. For example, um, when I served it in the Navy, I was a, a bosun's mate, for those of you who are uh, familiar with that specific rate. If that's something that I wanted to uh, continue to pursue in the private sector, then I would target the marine systems. These three uh, business units here, normally deal with uh, with shipbuilding. So if that's the arena that I wanted to stay in, these are going to be those that I would target. Not to say that other business units wouldn't have those specific opportunities, but they may be a little more opportunity specific. Again, as you begin to click on each, you're uh, pretty much directed to uh, that business unit's website. Once you click on, um, uh, the tab in the middle of the screen, it'll take you directly to that website and you can begin uh, researching the opportunities um, a little more in detail. When you're ready to start your career search, if we click on careers, here click search, this is where the, the magic actually begins. Um, actually, we have um, close to 3,800 career opportunities available across General Dynamics. Here you'll have access to all of the business units that currently have positions available. We have our job locations listed in alphabetical order by state. We have our job categories. If um, a lot of times in, in speaking with the military community, they may say I'm interested in IT, if that's the case, then they can narrow down the search to just IT positions. And then of course you can input the, the number of, of searches that you would like to see per page. Um, another way that you can conduct your search is conducting a keyword search. For example, I'll input program manager as a title. And I'll leave the, uh, the locations open. I'll run my search. And normally, you'll get results. Right now, it appears that General Dynamics currently has over 2,500 opportunities listed as program managers. This is partly true, and this is where the job search can get tricky. The way that I've conducted my job search, I've just input a title, program manager. Now, the way that most applicant tracking systems are designed, the system isn't just looking for the title program manager, it's looking for the words program manager, and they don't have to be in any specific order. The word program can be on line number one, 
manager can be on line number 21. So here, what we want to do is make this, the job search more specific in reference to these specific titles. So we'll put quotation marks around program and manager because that's the order that we want those to appear. Now we narrow that down to about 227 opportunities, and then we can go into the business units that have those specific opportunities available, or at least those titles. The locations, again, all in alphabetical order. And we can begin the search that way. Now keep in mind, these are all being pulled from each of the business units applicant tracking systems. Sometimes you may find a position not in the proper job category. For example, General Dynamics Mission Systems has logistics opportunities available, but those logistics opportunities do not fall in under the supply chain and logistics job category as they would on the General Dynamics page. So what ends up happening is when you go and you're looking for logistics with General Dynamics Mission Systems, those positions are listed under the procurement job category, not supply and logistics because it doesn't appear on the uh, specific web page. So normally what I would recommend is whatever you're targeting for yourself, make sure that you're treating yourself as the subject matter expert in that role. This way, even when it comes down to resumes, if you performed a specific task, you can demonstrate that on your resume and detail that information out. The next page that I'll share with you is the general dynamics page. This is the page for the website that I actually, or the organization that I represent. So we'll do the same thing. We'll go out to search. And on, on each individual page uh, or each individual business unit's website, you'll see some different uh, caveats that they have with, the, uh, with the, their roles. So for example, again, we have our job categories listed in alphabetical order. The uh, job locations are all listed in alphabetical order by state, uh, specifically on the General Dynamics Mission Systems page, if you are searching for uh, dedicated remote positions, there will be um, listed in two locations. The first is Telework USA. And currently there are 23 uh, positions that are available under Telework. We would also want to take a look at those that are listed under Varies USA. Sometimes these positions may, um, may appear twice in each location. However, this makes sure that you, does, that you do not miss out on uh, the uh, dedicated telework opportunities or um, remote opportunities. Also, when you're uh, searching, depending on the clearance level, and I get a lot of questions um, and statements made to myself, hey, Richard, all of the positions that I've identified require a clearance. Uh, we have positions that do not require clearances all the way up to a polygraph. So for those of you, if you do not possess a clearance, if you click on no clearance, here we have a, a total of 103 opportunities that currently do not possess a clearance. So in theory, you don't have to have a clearance to begin working for us. I highly recommend if you do not possess a clearance, the positions that you should be targeting are those with no clearance because you'll run into some stipulations on uh, the, the clearance, such as you have to have the clearance at the time of hire. The time of hire is what we consider to be the day that we offer that position to you. So if you don't have it, there's a strong possibility the position may not be offered to you even though um, you do qualify. My personal recommendation, if you do not have a clearance, 
come on board with us under a position that doesn't require a clearance. Once you get on board and you get acclimated to the culture, then you can begin looking at opportunities that do require a clearance. If that position is offered to you, once you go through the process of obtaining the clearance, you'll move on to that new role or that new clear role. If not, and you don't obtain the clearance, you're still employed with us. You still remain in your current role that doesn't require a clearance. So those are gonna be some things to, uh, to consider when you're conducting your job searches and when you're um, looking to um, targeting career opportunities for yourself. Um, that, that's pretty much what I have on at least being able to uh, target positions for yourself, how to target uh, positions for yourself. Uh, just remember that each time you go out to each individual organizational website uh, per business unit, if it's your first time applying for that position, you will have to create a profile for each business unit. In doing so, um, you may want to consider use, use, using the same uh, user and login information. This way, if you forget it for one, that will be your prompt to change all instead of trying to remember a password for mission systems, a password for GDIT, a password for ordinance and tactical systems, so on and so forth. If you can use uh, the same one, that would be helpful. I know me, if I don't write them down, I'll forget. So if, if, if that's something that you want to, uh, want to do for yourself, um, make sure that you're doing that. I would also recommend that once you begin the application process, if you can, create a tracking sheet for yourself. The tracking sheet should include the day that you applied for the position. It should include the position ID number, which for mission systems normally is going to be listed here. It will be the, the normally it's the year and five digits that follow that year. Include the uh, title of the position. You also want to leave space for the recruiter's contact information, which would include their name, email address, and direct telephone number once they have reached out to you. Because a, a lot of times they'll reach out to you, they may conduct a, an initial screening, you may not hear back as soon as you would like to. So at least this gives you the opportunity to follow up with the specific uh, recruiter. Um, you can also do the same for the hiring manager once you move into the interview phase, because a lot of times um, we all get swamped. We may not reach out to you um, as quickly as you would like us to reach out to you. So if you have an interview and two weeks have gone by, then at that point in time, you may want to reach back out to the recruiter. You may want to reach out to the hiring manager just to see if you are still in the running for that position. Most applicant tracking systems will allow you to log back in and check your application statuses. So if it says submitted, you're in a good place. It may say um, review not submitted. That means that they've decided to go on um, with, uh, with another candidate. You may not have qualified for that position, but at least you have the opportunity to know where you are in that specific application process. That is such a great uh, just information that you just dumped, uh, that you just shared with us, you just told us, this, this is incredible. Uh, so I really encourage our audience and our members who um, are watching to post their questions so that they can ask you, Richard, but also to follow up and continue to watch the replay so that in case there's anything that you missed, you know exactly what needs to go on. I mean, this is, um, Tell me again, six, seven business entities that you can eventually just go on and um, and find employment opportunities, Richard, right? We said business. Oh, uh, yeah, there, there, there's actually 10. 10. There you go. Right, 10. There, there, wow. there, there's 10 business units. And that what's, that's one of the things that makes general dynamics a, a little confusing. I've gone to, to many hiring events and um, 
the military community will, will come up to my booth and they'll let me know, hey, I applied for a position with GD and I haven't heard anything back. I'll gather up some of their information. The first thing I'll do is plug their information into the mission systems applicant tracking system. If I can't find that individual, that doesn't mean that they didn't apply for a position with GD. It just wasn't with mission systems. And then at that point, I'll share that information out to the other business units and hope that they can find the applicant. Yeah, that's great. Now, I do have a question and something I just personally want to know, because you mentioned and you you walk us through how to navigate the uh, the search. And so thank you so for also letting us know about telework and telework opportunities, yeah. because that's that's really big within our some of our military spouse members. But also, um, you know, I want to know in particularly what are some of those careers that are a little more, I guess you can say more just not necessarily trending but more abundant or or inclined to attract military spouses what role sometimes with such a big uh application or wealth of jobs you know like your site it could be a little mm -hmm. bit we, we tend to say well i think i want to be a program manager or maybe logistics or maybe project or what is mm -hmm. the most uh career that usually it's very attractive to military spouses and we tend to be a good fit so we can start with at least identifying some. Well, well those specific, uh, the opportunities actually vary based on um, the, the spouse's background. Um, and, and again, that can vary across the board because one of the things that, that's looked at is the background experience, the overall experience, if someone actually will qualify for an opportunity. So as, as we begin to look at what's attractive, or what's attractive is it varies across the board, even down to program management. Uh, when I'm speaking with, with service members and spouses, when they indicate that they're interested in program management, one of the things that I like to bring up is what specific niche are you going to bring to the table? Sometimes organizations will input a program manager position. You'll read three quarters down the page and come to find out once you start getting closer to the bottom is where they may indicate, oh, you have to have a background in IT. You've just taken so much time off of your job search because we looked at the program manager, it looks great, but they need someone with an IT background, which I may not have. Gotcha, okay, so, well, that's, so, that's, yeah. that's fair, yeah. That, that's very fair. It depends on, on the applicant's uh, right. yeah, background. Now, I do have a question. Uh, it, it's not popping into my chat, but it's from our Facebook community. So if someone doesn't have a secret clearance, can they mm -hmm. start the initiation process on their own? Is there such a thing that they can do that? I think I've been asked that even in the past before through another segment. But. Right. And, and when it comes down to clearances, they have to be sponsored by an organization. Um, Sometimes what may happen is an organization, if they make an offer for employment, what will happen is if that position requires a clearance, they'll sponsor that clearance. They'll help you put it or at least give you direction on submitting the paperwork for the clearance. At that point in time, um, I like to recommend for those of you that are getting put in for a clearance or if you're going for that process now, get rucksack ready to hurry up and wait. Because when we look at the federal government and how long that process takes, uh, my last clearance, which was granted in 2019, it took 18 months for that clearance to be granted. And that was with my former employer coming to my employer now. Luckily for me, this position doesn't require a clearance. So I've, I've had one, it's since expired, but that just gives you an idea of how long it can take for that clearance to, to be granted. Um, and in some cases, they're not always granted. So you have to also have to be prepared for that as well. If they're not granted, that organization pulls back their offer that they have on the table because at that point you don't meet the criteria. Gotcha. Okay. But in the but in the meantime, you could be internally working or doing some of the could you be working even if you don't have temporary, if you don't have a cyclical clearance yet and it's in the process of, of being worked. Uh, through and, and and approved? Normally not in that role if that gotcha. role requires a, a clearance. Um, I have seen in the past where organizations may bring an individual on 
and put them in an uncleared role until they find out if the clearance has been granted. Once it's granted, they move into that role. If not, then at that point, the organization has to uh, has to make a decision on do they keep the person on the uncleared role or do they simply move on? Gotcha. Okay, that's that's good to know so that we uh, we can all just kind of plan and have plan B for job opportunities just in case. And I do have some exactly. comments and some and some questions for you, Richard. But I do want to encourage our our audience. Uh, we're getting ready to wrap up in a few minutes, boy. Uh, so this is a great, incredible content for you to please. I encourage you to watch the replay as well as to share and tag uh, your uh, colleagues who are looking for federal contracting uh, careers because this is this is it. This is General Dynamics and this is the Richard Moore who is a, a veteran mentor and an incredible subject matter expert out there for our military community and he's within reach. So if you find him on LinkedIn, um, he'll probably take a few couple of days to answer back, but you can find him there as well as he's always uh, well attended at the Best to Industry uh, networking events and all kinds of other events throughout our community. But definitely reach out. And so we're talking uh, with General Dynamics about um, the opportunities and everything else that is going on. And so I am going to share the link where you can go and apply it. But anyway, for, our, for now, I am going to bring in some of the comments. And I think I did have... A question as well, Richard, about still the secret clearance. Uh, and the question is, what happens if your clearance is inactive? Can you still, um, I'm assuming, get into work or uh, be temporary sort of onboarded? Um, my my personal reaction for or, or um, um, from my experience would be, if it's inactive, then you still would have to be offered that opportunity and you have to be put in for the clearance. In some cases, even though it's inactive, I won't say that it's difficult to have it reactivated, but there has to be a um, an offer in place. Some organizations, when they say must have, that means you have to have it prior to even applying because they don't wanna take that time or they may not be able to take that time to wait six months, three months, two years, 18 months to get you to, I won't even say to get you on board, but at least get a response from the government, letting them know that whether or not that clearance has been granted. So definitely I would say when you come across um, um, positions here with General Dynamics Mission Systems, depending on which website you're looking at in reference to our business units, at best, look at those opportunities that do not um, require a security clearance because if so, uh, when I first came on board, I had gone to a, um, a hire, <clears throat> excuse me, a hiring event and a gentleman out of the blue came to my booth and said, Hey, Mr. Moore, I've been waiting for my clearance. Um, and it's been eight months. Have you spoken with, with the recruiter? Uh, no. I said, well, did they let you know that it takes time and it can be an extended period of time up to two years? Yes, I said, well, as soon as they find something out, they'll be able to reach out to you. And at that point in time, if, if it's offered, then the both of you can discuss um, hiring dates or at least a start date. If not, then at that point, they have to pull back on the offer. Wow. So, so we do have to, I mean, be proactive and be, you know, diligent. Of course, not to the, to the, to the extent that you email or you follow up every day or but definitely pay attention to detail. And, you know, when you think reasonable time, two weeks, maybe a month or so, depending on what the process has been, mm -hmm. reach out and find out and just politely ask and try to uh, find out where you can find a little bit more um, information so that you can, you know, figure out what's going on with your application process. Definitely. So uh, I do have, I just want to acknowledge a couple more comments um, someone, okay, so you answer the question, so they say thank you for the response, thank you. Uh, someone met, uh, made a comment, they want to volunteer, I think that's for Blue Star families, I'm hoping, but if not, does General Dynamics or you, do you have, do you get volunteers? Do you welcome volunteers? Let me put you on the spot too, maybe, maybe somebody else uh, within your team is looking for volunteers. We, we may, but, but that's information that, that I definitely would, uh, would have to, to run up the, the chain, um, we are um, actively uh, participants in the DOD 
skill bridge program as well as the uh, hiring our heroes corporate fellowship programs so if, if you wanted to uh, to take advantage of, of those I, I highly recommend to utilize that at, as a segue to catapult yourself into uh, general dynamics mission systems or any or the, any organizations that are actively participants Absolutely. And I just want to also acknowledge kind of like a, a LinkedIn user uh, made a comment is like, wow, kind of like my my version of the wow, the beats me amount of jobs uh, that you have available. Uh, definitely. And then, of course, my favorite comment that comes always is when someone tags and pays it forward for somebody else. Uh, so thank you for tagging and sharing the research with somebody else. Thank you. Um, and so uh, if you have any more questions, please post them for Richard before we go, because we're getting ready to wrap it up. And he has lots of military uh, spouses and veterans. He has to go out and hire. But I do want to put his information so that if you want to, you know, set up a time for him to go find him on Veterani. Uh, he is um, Richard Moore, General Dynamics Mission Systems. You can also connect with him on LinkedIn. There's his LinkedIn profile. Um, and then, of course, what we're here for, we're here for to, to share with you the careers links and the opportunities. So there's the general link for general dynamics. Uh, of course, like Richard mentioned, there's about 10 different business areas of expertise where you will most likely be able to find the one that is more suited for you. Uh, but also just, you know, search and do, do your research, search uh diligently to find the right opportunity. And if you're looking for telework, if you're a military spouse or anybody actually, but looking for telework or various, those are the keywords that you will find uh, telework USA or various USA. Uh, but if you have any questions, you can always reach out to and then uh, Richard is just an email away. So we can definitely, definitely go and, um, and get a hold of him and reach him so that we can share those opportunities with you. Um, Anything else, Richard, that we can share with our community uh, in case anybody has any questions, any more follow-up that we should know regarding uh, you guys in general? Um, yes, I, I mean, we're, we're a very diverse organization. So we're, we look to hire um, anyone, everyone, uh, granted that they are qualified candidates. I like to bring this up because a lot of times we don't take the time to tailor our resume as well as the application. This is so important. This is vital because in some cases, once you apply, if an applicant tracking system deems you as not qualified, you won't make it to, to the next gatekeeper, which is the, the recruiter. So please treat yourself as if you're the subject matter expert. My own personal opinion, if you're looking at a position and you're simply interested in that position, your competition isn't interested. Your competition is qualifying for this role. So interest versus qualification. Sometimes I, I butted head with individuals and try to get them to understand, though you're interested, I'm going to have to bring you up to speed. If you're qualified, you can pretty much come in and hit the ground running depending on how much of that position you actually qualify for. So just keep those things in mind. Um, definitely. Put your best foot forward. That, that's the most that, that I can ask. Um, you're not going to get selected for each and every position that, that you qualify for. Please be prepared for rejection. When I applied for this position, I had already been rejected for 26 other opportunities. And, and that was over a two-month period. So please just don't give up. Stay positive. Uh, definitely reach out to me via Veterati if you just need to chat or vent. I'm that ear that'll listen. Perfect. Yes. Thank you. That is really well. And I did have a question. I'm sorry on our one of our communities on our Facebook community that doesn't pop up here. But um, can you have more than one application? And I think you just mentioned that you can apply to more than one uh, departments or or businesses uh, business departments within the general yes. dynamics. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yes. You you can have multiple. Um, applications, whether they're within the same business unit or different business units. However, the one thing to keep in mind is if you put in 10 applications for my business unit mission systems, only one recruiter is going to reach out to you at a time. So it's going to be difficult to try to compare which opportunity is best for you because if 10 recruiters reach out to you from the same organization mission systems, the salaries are going to be different. 
work schedules are going to be different. Not to mention that makes us look unprofessional. And then on top of that, we're confusing you. So if you apply 10 positions, only one recruiter at a time from that specific business unit, we'll reach out to you. And are, are the other recruiters able to look at the different, uh, like we always tell everyone, you know, with best practices, tailor your resume for that position. So if they see that there are multiple applications with multiple resumes tailored to different opportunities, is that going to throw off the uh, a recruiter or anyone within your unit a little off? Are they able to see that or cross-reference or, or not really? Not quite, because as a recruiter, my concern would be my positions only. I'm not concerned with my colleagues there they oversee those positions they know what they're looking for so i don't go in and say oh jane doe applied to 10 positions let me look at all all of her different resumes for her skill sets no i'm honing in on my position and my position only. jane doe meets those qualifications i'm going to call jane doe we're going to have a conversation at that point if she's asking about other positions i can't discuss those positions with her Got it. Only the one that he's he or she is calling you about. Right. Perfect. Uh, okay. And uh, okay. Perfect. That this is we're getting ready to reach our limit, our time. And I know you're very busy. You have to go and continue to do more outreach and continue to prep and, and reach those variety calls. Which, by the way, if you are looking for um, for Richard Moore, make sure that you reach out on LinkedIn as well, and then look him up on Veterati. Uh, there is his name. You can set up a time and then be able to discuss. Uh, the time that you actually set up a, a variety will be a little more of a mentor, mentee, but it's good to pick his brain about the application process in general. And then if you're looking for an immediate career opportunity, well, not immediate in a sense, but you know, immediately to get started, there is his link where his team and uh, they are able to work and share the uh, job opportunities, his business team. So make sure that you explore that is gdmissionsystems.com slash careers and explore the multiple, multiple career opportunities. You can also, do you have in your team, uh, Richard, do you guys have telework and various um, listed opportunities within your unit? Uh, yes. On the spot uh, here. Yeah, yes, there are actually, I want to say a total of 23 uh, positions that are listed as telework or varies. So again, we do have those opportunities, even those that do not have or that are not dedicated as telework uh, because of, of the, the environment that we're in. Uh, you can, once you're interviewed, it's perfectly fine to ask if that position can be worked in a remote type capacity um if so then you you also can discuss at what percentage in the event that sometimes travel may be involved um but for the most part those are going to be some good interview questions that, that you can ask at that point perfect thank you absolutely so that's definitely um where you can find out more so thank you so much richard and i do have just one minute and i am going to put you on the spot and ask you uh to something that you know i've been sharing a little bit throughout our community and this is a, an initiative that is coming up here at blue star families in the next few days and that is welcome week blue star welcome week and so it's at the end of the month so we're looking for all of our community members to feel welcome to feel included in the uh, community and and most importantly to participate some of our events you can go to our website find out a little bit more about it but i do want to ask you richard what makes you feel welcome when you when you relocated since you did two different transition uh sessions what made you feel welcome what can we do as neighbors now that some of us have transitioned out of the military do for our still active military families to feel i would say welcome? I, I would say definitely um network get in tune with those that are transitioning because they're going to have uh, they're going to face a major challenge all of our transitioning service members and military spouses are at a disadvantage solely because we have those that have served for 20 years. They're competing against individuals who have been in the workforce for 20 years. So when you compare side by side, individuals that haven't served in the military, they know how to write resumes. They pretty much, they know how to interview. They know how to get beyond the applicant tracking system. Whereas 
a lot of us, when we served, we didn't write a resume until it was time to transition. We don't even know how to uh, negotiate salaries when that comes down to it. Whenever we made rank, that was it. You make That's rank, it. this is how much you're gonna make per month annually, and that was it. We couldn't go to the commander and say, hey, I'm gonna need an extra $5,000 a month. It just didn't work that way. So get in tune, in, in, in tune with, the, with, with the surrounding environment. Make sure that, again, you're staying in tune with the military community. Reach out to individuals like myself that have their hands in and arms around that entire military community. That's the best way I would recommend for individuals to feel uh, welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. Thanks for the kind message, because definitely we are to reach out to our neighbors, to our friends, to our partners, to our colleagues, and just check in. And if you have a community, you know, perhaps that what you at some point were very active and you're no longer there, but you have friends or neighbors or um, colleagues that are relocating there, make those introduction as well so that they are not yeah. completely on their own. So thank you so much for your time, Richard. We're at a time and I really, really thank you for all of the great insight that you shared with us today for this yeah. uh, webinar, as well as uh, we look forward to your access, you know, to following up with you. And thank you for the accessibility to for our community to be able to reach uh, reach you either through Veterati as mentees or uh, directly through our LinkedIn and continue on with the discussion about careers. Thank you so much. Have a great day. You too, Laura. Thank you. Thank you.